Hey there guys, The Network Rear here, hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be looking at how to implement a wire guard tunnel for those Road Warrior setups using Microtik Router OS version 7. So this is going to be a bit of a fun video because this is applicable to us everyday users because this is a great type of solution for people that might be traveling a lot or just everyday home users that want a way to browse the internet securely or to access all of the network resources that they need to remotely without a lot of hassle because WireGuard is awesome, it's quick to configure and this Road Warrior setup is also just going to be fun. Now this is the third video that I'm making on WireGuard. The very first video was while WireGuard was still in a beta feature on Microtik. Second video was more for side-to-side -side stuff. So this video is for us, so it's going to be cool and we're going to have fun. I'm not going to do a big presentation or anything. I just quickly want to explain the topology, what we're going to set up. And then I'll show you how to configure everything from scratch on Microtik as well as on some WireGuard clients. So let's get into the video. All right, so here we're in the topology that we're going to configure. So basically, we're going to have a Microtik that will be acting as our WireGuard server, where all of our peers or clients can connect to so that they can actually browse the internet through the WireGuard tunnel as well as access each other's networks if need be. So this is going to be quite fun. So the main thing that you need to understand with the WireGuard server is you're going to need some form of an IP address that the clients can use to connect to as their remote address. So preferably a, a static IP. However, you could use something like a DNS hostname and bind that to your router and then they could use the DNS hostname just to connect if you were using some type of dynamic connection. All right, so that is the one prerequisite. The networks that I've marked in purple, these are in essence the WireGuard tunnel IP addresses. So each device will statically configure an IP on their side to actually get onto the WireGuard network. Now you'll see that the clients I've marked as slash 32s, even though on the Microtik is a slash 24. Reason being is if you define those slash 24 networks as allowed IPs, on each peer, you're going to break your wire guard. So this is where a lot of people fail when they try this type of setup because they use the incorrect addressing. So please, for your clients, give them slash 32s that they'll bind on their side. And this way, then you can have multiple clients connecting to the same wire guard interface or server so that they can easily just get onto the network. All right. Now, in our topology, we're going to act as if we've got the doggo <laughs> coming in from a mobile hotspot. And this will just be a Windows 7 machine using the normal WireGuard client. And then I'm going to have Max that will also be connecting from the hotel Wi-Fi, even though it's not real, it's, it's just everything happening on my virtual topologies. But this is just a scenario. So then Max can connect over the hotel Wi-Fi securely and it will be able to get to the WireGuard server and get to the internet over this tunnel. And this will be on an Ubuntu operating system. So... I'm not going to go through the whole setup on Ubuntu because there is a few extra steps. However, I will use some reference material or, or post that in the comments for you guys to go through. So that you can also just replicate that if you need be. But I think this doggo setup with a client, which you might install on your Windows laptop or on your phone or on your MacBook or something, that, that's pretty straightforward. So simple client, you click add a tunnel, you put in the tunnel details and off you go. You, you have a great time. All right, so this is the topology. Let's actually get into the lab side. So we'll log on to this Microtik first where the server will be. All right, so we're logged into a virtual machine and we've got a Winbox session running to what's going to be the server. And to set up WireGuard, you will actually just go to the WireGuard tab, open it up. And again, a prerequisite is version seven. You cannot do this on version six or below. Now in the WireGuard tab, we have WireGuard and Peers tabs. So these are important because the WireGuard tab will allow you to create a physical WireGuard interface or actual virtual interface on the router. And it will have a public key that, it, that you need to actually get to put on your clients that you would like to connect via WireGuard with. And you can also do stuff like assign an IP address to this interface. So let's start there. Let's create a new WireGuard interface. You can leave it as WireGuard 1, or you could perhaps make it something like um, Microtik WireGuard. MTU, you can leave as 1420 as the default, or you can tweak that around, but I, I would recommend just leaving it alone. And then we can set a listen port. So the listen port is important because your client needs to know what this port is so that they can connect to it. Microtik uses this port by default. So just make sure if you are using any type of firewall rules that you allow 
any traffic coming in on this port, so input filter, so that it doesn't get dropped, so that the connection can actually successfully be established. Now, another important set of configuration here is the private and public key, but we don't type that in, we just click on apply, then the Microtik will generate those values itself. So again, public key, very important because you use this to give it to your clients or configure it on your clients to actually connect to this WireGuard server. And next step that we want to do is we just want to add an IP address to our WireGuard interface. So I'm going to go into my IP and address, click on the plus, and this will now be, think of this as the WireGuard range for all of the clients that they can use to get to the router and to communicate with each other and all that stuff. So in the topology, it was 192.168.32.1 slash 24. The slash 24 will only configure on the Microtik the actual clients will get slash 3d2 addresses. So let me select microtik wireguard as the interface, click on apply. So that will now be an IP address that the, the client should be able to ping if the wireguard tunnel establishes. Now the next step is we actually need to configure a peer. So if you go to the peers tab, this you need to do per client. So each new client that you want to add to this wireguard server, you're gonna have to configure a new peer because you need to get your clients public keys as well, because they will also have a private and public key. The private keys, it's more or less being used to encrypt and decrypt information, and the public keys is more or less to verify authenticity and making sure you are who you say you are, because you could have only gotten that key if somebody gave it to you from the server. All right, so public key we will get in a second when we actually start configuring the client. Our endpoint, we're going to leave the endpoint details blank because in our example, these are people that might be connecting or traveling and they're connecting from the hotel, Wi-Fi or something. So these aren't static addresses or it's not side to side VPNs that we want to configure. So we leave endpoint alone, but we need to set allowed addresses. Now this is where we need to make sure that we decide which clients we or what IPs we want to bind to which clients. So make sure each client gets a unique slash 32 address that's in that WireGuard range that we configured earlier. So let's just configure the doggo details first, which is the Windows 7 machine we're on already. And that is going to be 192.168.32.3 slash 32. We're not going to set anything else here. We just need to get the public key. So let's get the public key by going onto the WireGuard application. And this you can download from wireguard.com. You can install it on Windows, Mac OS, <laughs> any type of device. And it's quite similar. And the nice thing is you can like save tunnel details and import tunnel details and whatnot, but we're just going to create a new tunnel from blank. So I right click, I add an empty tunnel, and now we need to specify some details. So the name, I can make this doggo-road warrior. And here is the public key just below it. So this public key, we just need to copy. And let's just go back to the Microtik, paste it in here and click on apply. So. That's actually how quick and easy it is. So let me go back onto the client and now we need to configure the client side. So this is also, I'll put in the reference details. I might also just list all of the commands in the top comment, but it's pretty straightforward. Your interface, so you'll see this is in a different color. It's in this brackets. So interface, and now we can specify our interface details, which will be a new WireGuard interface on your actual client. And here we're going to set a address equals, and that is now going to be the IP address of your interface of your WireGuard client. So in our example, that is 192.168.32.3 slash 32. And then I can also set something like the DNS so that I can do some name resolution. You can set that to your own DNS service if you have them. And the private key, make sure you don't touch that. Leave that alone, because if you do anything there, you will break the WireGuard connection. Now we've set up the interface portion, but just like on the micro ticket, also needs to connect to a peer. So here's where we configure our peer details. We make a new box, we call it peer, go down, and now we can set the peer details. So first thing that we want to set is a public key. And the public key is what's bound to our Microtix WireGuard interface. So let's go back to the WireGuard, double click on this. Let's copy the whole string. So everything here, go back to our client and paste it in. Besides our public key, we need to know what our uh, end point is. And the end point is what we're connecting to. So this will be the WAN or public IP or the DNS hostname or whatever of your Microtik. And here you can put in um, 192.168.149.151, which was in my example. 
And then you just need to specify the colon here and the port that you'll be connecting on. So 13231 is MicroTik's default, so that's what I'm going to use. And then besides the public key and endpoint, we also need to set one more thing. Let me just quickly get that our allowed IPs. So allowed IPs is basically what you will be sending over the tunnel. So since this is a road warrior setup, we want all the traffic to go over the IPsec or not the IPsec tunnel, the wire guard tunnel. Um, we are just going to specify this as 0000 slash 0, which is a default route out. And that's it. This is all of the configuration that we need to actually get this running. So I'll just click on the save button. And now we have a cool little activate button. So the moment we click on that, my MicroTik is going to disconnect because all of the traffic is now going to be pushed over the tunnel. But the cool bit is I should be able to access the MicroTik again over its WireGuard IP address, the dot one address. So let's activate it, see what happens. All right, then we see it drops. Let's go into our command prompt quickly. See if we can actually get to the WireGuard IP 192.168.32.1. Hey, look at that, we can get to that. So since we can ping that, we should be able to connect to that as well. 192.168.32.1. Awesome. So we can get to our MicroTik over WireGuard. And let's just see, can I ping out to the internet? Ping www.google.com. So I can get to Google. And I can ping really anything that I want to. So let's see, can I ping Cloudflare's DNS? Yes. All right. So this is the Windows 7 client, and this is awesome and cool. Let's do something fun. And I'm just going to quickly set this up on my Ubuntu desktop as well. And then we'll do some further uh, tests using WireGuard. So let's get into that. All right. So we're in Ubuntu. So I'm just quickly going to open up Wine so I can actually get onto Winbox. So CD downloads, Wine Winbox. And let's get onto TMB01. So I've connected to TMB01. And with the WireGuard, I've already installed the WireGuard app. Let me just open up a new tab here. Because if you do a sudo app get install WireGuard, then it will install the WireGuard application on your Ubuntu server or your desktop or whatever you're using. And then from there, you can actually issue some WireGuard commands. Now, I will put a link in an article that you can follow to actually set this up on your own Ubuntu systems if you'd like to. But the main point is we are going to have a config file. So I'm just quickly going to sudo that, sudo etc wireguard uh, w0.conf. Let me also just nano it, sorry. <laughs> it would be weird just to pseudo something without any context. And here we can see the setup's already done. I've already got an interface here. There's a private key. There's my address, which is 192.168.32.4 slash 32. So these details have already been filled in. I've got my peer public key here, but this public key might be different. So let's just quickly make sure, log on to the MicroTik, maximize that, get into our WireGuard section, get into our peers, or actually just the WireGuard section. Yes, so this public key has changed from what I configured earlier when I tested. So let's just update this. So I'm just going to backspace this public key and paste the new public key. Allowed IPs, just like on my Windows client, it's 0000 slash 0 out. So all traffic I'm gonna shoot out over this uh, WireGuard tunnel. And then we've got our endpoint IP, which is 192.168.149.151. All right, so this is the client setup, but I still need to set up the peer on my actual WireGuard server. So let me, let me just get the public key on my Ubuntu box. So let's do a sudo cat etc WireGuard uh, public dot key. So this is my public key on my Ubuntu box. So let me just copy that. And let's create a new peer. Again, it is the WireGuard interface. Here's my peers public key. I don't put in the endpoint details. So Max, we don't know where they're coming from since they are a road warrior. And now we just need to set their allowed address, which is 192.168.32.4 slash 32. I will apply this. And then once this is applied, I should be able to connect with Ubuntu onto WireGuard. So let's do that. So I can just run a sudo wireguard dash quick up wireguard zero. So this in essence just enables the wireguard interface. So if I do something like a route, 
I can see where traffic is routed out, but let's just do like a ping quickly. Or let's do a trace route. Trace route 8888. And there I can see the traffic is being pushed to my WireGuard server, which is awesome. Let's just quickly look at the WireGuard itself. Or let's go to our interfaces. So here we can see the WireGuard interface. And again, you can treat this like a normal interface. It is just that simple. It's no longer anything special. So 192.168.32.1. Let me just connect that way. And then on Winbox, I actually just want to get back to the interfaces because like I said, I just want to show you, you can actually torch this and see all of the traffic. So there we can see Max connecting to the server and there's Doggo connecting to the server. So let's do a little bit of a test. I'll go onto my Firefox and I'll quickly run a speed test. And then with the speed test running, we should actually see um, a lot of throughput on it because I've got a 200 megabits in and 100 megabits up uh, link on my home connection. So let's run this and let me just minimize that. And then while that's running, just check what the interface is doing. So we're just actually waiting for that speed test to start. Let's just go back to Firefox. There we go. It started. Look at that traffic. So WireGuard is actually exceptionally, it's, it's a quick and fast protocol. It's so awesome. I love it. Look at that. I am pushing 200 megabits over the tunnel, sometimes a bit more. <laughs> And this is now coming from my Linux box. And we should see the upstream now. And that is equivalent to what my actual link is at home. So I've got the throughput. Uh, we can see it's doing its thing. So I'm really, really happy with this. And the cool thing is these machines actually have access to each other now as well. So if from my Linux box or from Max, let's see, can I get to Doggo's IP, which was dot three? I can get to Doggo so they can get to each other. So we've got a WireGuard network running between all of these devices. And we didn't have to specify any remote address on our peer, uh, on the MicroTik, because it doesn't need anything. As long as the keys match and they are what they need to be, you can connect from anywhere in the world using any internet connection, as long as the public IP address of your MicroTik is reachable that you're going to be forming that uh, connection on. So I'm really happy with this. This is where we can end off the video. I hope this helps some of you to set up this type of solution, the Road Warrior setup, because I know a lot of you ask for it. So if you run into any issues, please let me know as well and engage with me in the comment section. Tell me, is there any other videos you'd like to see? Would you like to see a similar thing for IPsec? Because you can also do a Road Warrior with IPsec. Um, is there any other MicroTik concepts you'd like me to go into? And yeah, I hope you guys have been doing great. And I'd also just like to thank my YouTube and Patreon members for all of the support you guys have been giving. I really appreciate it. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.